Yeah, yeah, what's going on guys? This is Spartan here, nutrition, training, and hormone expert and Prometheus Pro Bodybuilder. Guys, today we're going to be talking about testosterone versus HGH. Which is better? Which is superior? Let's get right into this. All right, first and foremost, guys, we will start over with testosterone, also known as the big T. Let's get started. Number one thing to note with testosterone in regards to uh, bodybuilding athletics is that testosterone is the primary, the main driver for muscle growth, muscle growth, muscle gain, uh, testosterone. This is key. So testosterone binds onto the androgen receptor sites and stimulates the androgen receptor sites on cells. Namely, uh, we're talking the skeletal muscle, muscle, obviously muscle tissue, uh, Testosterone stimulates uh, AR receptor sites in the muscle tissue, in the brain to exert effects. Uh, the skin, think oily, more oily skin, uh, stimulates uh, body hair growth. You know, we're talking beard, we're talking back hair. Um, there are androgen receptor sites, even not on the adrenals, on the organs. Basically, in a nutshell, testosterone is going to be stimulating every androgen receptor site in the human body. But for bodybuilding, performance, and athletics sake, we're going to be sticking to focus on skeletal muscle because that's, of course, the common interest here. Having said that, so testosterone, number one, muscle gain. Major, major muscle gain. This is a major mechanism. Having said that, guys, this is a little, this is more of a minor or a, a secondary, a minor uh, effect of using testosterone is fat loss. Again, it's, it's a smaller um, it's a smaller degree compared to HGH. When we talk about HGH, the main mechanism or the main gain is going to be fat loss. That, that's major. So it's kind of flipped. Whereas testosterone fat loss is going to be minor. HGH fat loss is going to be huge. It's going to be major. And this is just by mechanism of action, how uh, the hormone binds onto cells and exerts its effect. Let's move on. Testosterone. And we talked about fat loss. This is very important, guys. Testosterone, feel good, uh, confident. So testosterone is a feel-good hormone. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy, um, um, even at higher dosages, even euphoric. Um, and, I mean, not like you need to te uh, teach a teenage, a healthy teenage guy with high testosterone levels how to be happy. You're just full of energy. You feel confident. You feel good. Um, testosterone, I've heard many doctors uh, talk about testosterone as a feel-good hormone. And interestingly enough, guys, um, some of the newest testosterone studies coming out of Europe actually shows that taking testosterone for men with higher testosterone actually socialize more and do better as uh, businessmen, salesmen, um, anything that is reliant on social interaction. Bet you guys have not heard that before. Anyways, guys, moving on. Um, testosterone strength gain strength gain again this is a major this is a major major um, effect of testosterone muscle gain we've talked about that also strength gain um, testosterone will bind onto androgen receptor sites in the brain and the primary nervous system and increase basically the available nervous system response, think stronger electrical signals in general, creating a stronger contraction. You're able to push harder, push longer, and just uh, take more. Anybody who has uh, either done a high TRT um, or high testosterone uh, before knows this to be true. Having said that, guys, uh, strength gain, we just talked about that, and its effects on the nervous system. Next, guys, is drive. Drive is super important, and it's right along here, side here with energy. So these, these two basically go together. Um, but uh, drive and energy. So testosterone, having high testosterone levels or taking testosterone creates high amounts of drive. Um, you're more focused on your goals. You have more energy to, to reach those goals. Um, drive is more of a medical term, or that's what they use more so to describe either sex drive or just drive in general. Um, I like the term, um, I would rather call it energy, while well, I have that listed below here, but or my term is passion. So it increases your passion, and this mean, it can mean anything. The things, you, the things you like, the things you want to go after, you like more, and the things you don't like, well, they just kind of stay the same. Having said that, guys, um, I talked about this already a little bit, um, increases your energy level, 
And this is just, uh, you don't need to sleep as much. I could have rolled sleep in here. You don't need to sleep as much to get the same uh, results. And this has actually been studied and proven. Look up uh, high testosterone on sleep study. Type that into Google. You will see um, a big sleep study they did where they basically, they ranked men. They gave, they gave men uh, basically, it was, it was like 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, 300 milligrams of testosterone, uh, somewhere in that range. And they found that the men receiving the highest doses of testosterone, the men who had the highest levels of testosterone, obviously per given dose, they needed less sleep and they still functioned just as good. So when they, when they uh, ran uh, IQ tests, uh, reaction tests, um, uh, impulse tests, reaction tests, they found out that basically the more testosterone you have in your system, the better you function on less sleep and also you didn't need as much sleep to function at your maximum. Super important, I'll say that again. The higher the testosterone level in the studies, um, the, the less sleep you need to function at your maximum peak. So a normal guy, let's say, let's say you have a testosterone level of 800, okay? And you need, we'll just say you need nine hours of sleep. If this person had a higher testosterone level, he could be at his peak, at his maximum. He would only need seven hours of sleep to be at that same peak. Anyways, guys, moving on. Let's talk about HGH. HGH, we'll separate this. HGH, guys, the bottom line is HGH is a repair horm hormone. I call it the mechanic hormone. That's just the easiest way for me uh, to remember it and also to teach it. HGH is the repair or mechanic hormone. Basically, HGH travels throughout the whole entire body. We're talking muscle, bone, skin, nails, fat tissue, brain, everything, HGH, the function is basically the same. It attaches on and it acts as a mechanic hormone. It heals, repairs, and uh, completely resets every cell in the human body. Now, obviously, the main, main, um, the main effect of HGH, unlike testosterone being muscle gain, the main effect is going to be seen with bodybuilding and um, athletics in the term of fat loss. The biggest, drop, the biggest effect on, on athletics, bodybuilding, muscle gain is going to be in the realm of fat loss. I cannot stress this enough. So again, you know, testosterone, the minor effect was fat loss. HGH is completely opposite. The major effect is fat loss and muscle gain secondary is more of a minor or a secondary effect. So it's literally just flipped from testosterone. Whereas testosterone muscle gain is, um, is number one and fat loss second, HGH is the exact opposite with fat loss first and muscle gain is more of a minor or a secondary action. Moving on guys, this is super important. HGH, like I said, it's a repair mechanic hormone. It is going to do tremendous things for your joints, your tendons, your ligaments. So whereas muscle in the, in the muscle tissue, um, in the male anatomy, we find testosterone attaching onto androgen receptor sites, where, which are more heavily located in uh, muscle tissue versus joints, tendons, ligaments. HGH, on the other hand, is going to be attaching uh, strongly and in greater number onto joints, tendons, and ligaments. And that's why people who take HGH, they basically re regrow uh, joint, joint tissue, tendons, ligaments, it's basically, again, that, that mechanic repair, medic hormone, whatever you want to call it, this is going to be a major effect. Joints, tendons, ligaments, and you don't have that with testosterone, nowhere near close to the same degree. So in terms of healing, moving on, hyperplasia. This is also an effect. HGH is an amazing, is a miracle hormone in the, in the realm of hyperplasia. Now, guys, People aren't going to tell you this, but you're going to get a little bit of hyperplasia with testosterone use, but nothing like the hyperplasia you're going to get when using HGH. Now, the thing is, guys, I'm going to hear people saying, oh, well, you know, if you, again, let's say you go to PrometheusHRT.com and you get uh, either synthetic HGH or if you're younger, they put you on um, uh, strong HGH releasing peptides, ipamorelin, uh, CJC, no dat combo to bring your... HGH levels up to where you were when you're 18. There's going to be people that say, okay, well, if you're just putting your HGH levels back to where you were when you were 18, you're not going to get the hyperplasia. It's not enough. That's not true, guys. We found out that dose dependently uh, across the 
in medical, in medical studies across the medical board, we see that um, hyperplasia is dependent on the satellite cells in muscle tissue, right? The more satellite cells uh, that turn into either type 1 or type 2 muscle fibers, that increases the muscle tissue. Basically, you're making more baby muscle cells, which later, guys, can be used for hypertrophy via testosterone and in weight training. Those baby cells getting bigger, bigger, stronger, uh, and obviously, you get the strength adaptations with that. Oh boy, my board is looking crazy. You get the strength gains, the strength adaptations uh, with that after the hyperplasia has taken place. So guys, it's dose dependent. Obviously, uh, exceeding uh, you know your your the the peak uh, levels that you would at, that you would be at when you're 18. There's a lot of side effects, and it's not worth uh, again same as testosterone. It's not worth having high high HGH and IGF levels um, for long periods of time, and that's why. If you do HGH replacement, put them back to where they were when you're 18, get all the gains, reap all the benefits, and don't pay the price. Okay, that's basically in a nutshell. Having said that, guys, we'll talk more about that later. Sleep. Sleep is huge for HGH. Sleep is going to be a major, major improvement. You're going to sleep deeper, more delta wave sleep, more REM sleep. Your sleep is going to be more restorative. Um, and in most cases, if you're an adult and you're on HGH replacement, you won't have to sleep as much to be at your peak. Huge improvement. Sleep is probably one of the big major uh, gains of HGH usage. Guys, skin. Let's talk about skin. This is huge too. Remember how I said HGH is a repair hormone? I call it the mechanic hormone. You want to call it the medic hormone. Whatever, doesn't matter. Skin is going to be huge in the same way that HGH travels throughout the entire bloodstream, attaches onto every single tissue in the human body, you know, bone, muscle, fat, skin, nail, hair even, hair growth is going to excel. It, of course, has a major effect on your skin. You will notice that your skin looks better. It's, your skin is clearer. Your skin is, looks nicer. It's tighter. You basically keep uh, looking younger for longer. And that's another reason that HGH replacement is huge. You know, you want to look better. Uh, if you can only pick one, you want to look better and sleep better. And you want to be skinnier do the HGH replacement. Um, and again, if you're younger, just do the H the strong HGH releasing peptides. We're talking Ipermortaline, CJC, NODAC combo. That is the what Prometheus boasts. And if there's another good clinic, they'll be sticking to that combo as well. Guys, having said that, that's pretty much it. HGH versus testosterone in a nutshell. And guys, I just want to put this out here. These two should not even be compared. They're, they're nothing close to each other. Um, testosterone, HGH, completely two different animals. I'm sick of people comparing them, uh, but I still want to do a comparison video anyway because this is a question people ask. Or if people only have a certain amount, have a set, you know, financial limit, and they say, hey, you know, I can either afford uh, HGH uh, replacement or testosterone replacement, uh, guys, this would be a great comparison. But just to say, you know, which is better, testosterone versus HGH? Don't even compare them. I'm sick of hearing that comparison because as you guys can tell, these two are completely, uh, completely nowhere in the same category. It is apples to oranges or barbell to dumbbells, so to speak. Guys, that's pretty much it. Seth Spartan, and we are out of here.